is for what? Never forget that the plan, the purpose, the plan and pursuit of salt is for training. Let's not lose sight of that. There's so much where we're going to take off from. But I want us to look at Psalm 127. Psalm 127. Psalm 127. From verse 1. Psalm 127 from verse 1. Psalm 127 from verse 1. It says, Unless, except, or unless, these are the old King James and the new one. It said, except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Hey. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman worketh but in vain. I wonder what we are building, even as a church. I wonder what you are building. I wonder what all of us are building. Because remember that we have a great commission which came from Christ to all of us. Anything that we build that is not in line with the master's building, then it means we have labored in vain. I don't want us to, after certain years, to find that what we were doing was for ourselves. And never forget also, that is also one of the most caring part of all this, is after you build something, one year or two years after you are departed, the thing closed down. So it means that it was not his building. It was your building. So now that you are out, then it shuts down. We see that in so many businesses. We also see that in churches. We see so many churches after the leaders leave the scene, the system dies. We must make sure that we are in the commission, in the great commission. So whatever we are building will outlive us. That even when we are not there, the building will stand forever. It will not be a monument, but it will be a living and active building. A living and what? An active building. That is still standing in spite of the storms or the rain or whatever is going to come against it. You know, I love what uh, this guy said. We're going to come back here. Ecclesiastics 2 verse 18. Ecclesiastes 2 verse 18. Let's just look at this quickly. Ecclesiastes 2 verse 18. Let's read. Then I hated all my labor in which I had toiled under the sun. Why? Because I must leave it to the man who will come after me. <laughs> that is Uncle Solo. <laughs> all his 1,000 wife, he thought he was going to go with them. <laughs> he thought he was going with his 1,000 wives. <laughs> but he didn't know that. He's finished. May this not be our testimony in Jesus' name. You should be excited that when you're leaving the scene, you know you have trained, capable people. You know that this one is no wonder uh, uh, the Bible tells us to look for faithful men in which we should give these things to. And that's what we'll look at on Sunday, men that are full of the Holy Ghost. They're full of the Holy Ghost and they're full of faith. These are the people that can extend whatever you put in their care. But men that are not filled with the Holy Ghost and are not full of faith, you can't leave anything for them. They will destroy it. It's going to be garbage in and garbage out. But it's, it's so touching to see what Paul say, uh, Solomon says here. Let's, go to, let's read the New Living or the Message Bible. Yeah? The Message Bible. He says... Let's read together. He says, the message Bible. And I hated everything I had accomplished and what accumulated on this earth. 
I can't take it with me. <laughs> no. I have to leave it to whoever comes after me. I hope that's one thing you must know. That's what I'm talking about, the Great Commission. Uh, we're going to say we're going to tie it up. Because your greatest and my greatest concern should be after you go. What will happen to your legacy? What will happen to what you left behind? I'll give you an example. Because if you look at the, the, the is it the problem we are facing today even as a nation, uh, all over the world concerning the church, with all this regulation we are going through, it's not the first time they are trying to regulate the church. It has been there from history, from the time of uh, Constantina, in the centuries, 18 centuries, where the church could, the church, they were doing everything, they were doing even worse things than we are doing now. So they were having problems among themselves. So they could not regulate themselves. And we know from scriptures what Paul says about that, that if we can't judge ourselves, how can we judge the world? If we can't control ourselves, how can we control the world? So look at what happened. Sometimes I wonder if some of our church fathers read their history very well. Especially those fathers who are saying that, yes, the church must be regulated. They have not read their Bible, and they have not read their history. Then I wonder, they are just fathers for what? No information. It has never worked. You know, so the church was having problems among themselves. They couldn't regulate themselves in terms of what they were teaching. The doctrines were off. So they decided to go to Constantino and tell him, now that was the gov government of then, and told him, please help us because we can't regulate ourselves. Please help us regulate ourselves. So Constantino, or whatever they call him, decided to take over the church. Now he himself decided to put some committees together to formulate rules and regulations to govern the church. Ladies and gentlemen, that was how Catholic Church was born. <laughs> because they felt this would be the body to regulate the church worldwide. But thank God, after we see all what they were doing in the Catholicism, then somebody came out of Catholicism. His name is called Martin Luther. Remember, there are two Martin Luthers. They are the Martin Luther of Germany and the Martin Luther of America. So Martin Luther came out of the Catholic Church because he said, if this body was set up to manage the church, and because he was in the Catholic Church, and to see what they are doing there, this is not God. If we are talking about faith, and these guys are doing something else, then this is not God. That was how Martin Luther left the Catholics and started the Protestant movement. And then that gave birth to um, what we have, the, is it Methodist? So going back to, yeah, we get back to, uh, sorry, to the Lutheran church. The moment, uh, what's it called, Martin Luther left, they decided to put the church in an organizational structure. And you can't put God in a structure. So when they decide to put the church in a structure, God left. And you see today what Lutheran is all about. It's no longer involved in soul winning. Is no longer involved in the things that the original founder was involved in. That's where we have, uh, what's it called? Uh, John Wesley came. And then John Wesley came, started a move where Methodists, I think Methodists, right? Methodists came from. Uh, in in Martin Luther's time, if you don't fast twice or three times in a week, I stand to be corrected on that, you are not ordained as a deacon in the Methodist church under Martin Luther. The moment Martin Luther died, we all know today even in South Africa what's going on in the Methodist church. We are talking about a movement that was founded in fasting and prayer. Ask some of our Methodists who went last day fast. Ask if this way, uh, uh, what's it called, John Wesley founded is what is happening today. So you can see all through history, when we start trying to put some certain things together without God, we are going to build in vain. 
And this is going to cause more damage, which we are seeing today, more harm than what we are seeing today. So it must not be the same with you, that after you have gone, what you have worked for all your life is what Solomon is saying there. That now what he's afraid of is that who is going to take over from him? He's going to take over from him. But we must not forget something. If we go back to Psalms, Psalms, where we're reading now, 127, he says, except the Lord build the house. Let's go then. Let's go. I think we have Bibles. Thank you. <laughs> We've got this guy scare us off. Leave it in that translation. Leave it in the translation. If God does not build the house, the builders only build shacks. Uh -huh. Pronounce it. And you know what shacks does. They don't last for long. They have no proper plan. They have no direction. So church history has been filled up with such things. When we lose purpose, we lose purpose and plan and pursuit of what the original intent is, is when we start building shacks, as the scripture says. He say you build shacks. And look at the next one. If God does not guard the city, the night man might as well nap, which means sleep. Because it doesn't matter your security systems. Don't you see sometimes you put all the security system after the umbrella price has gone, that's when they are running down. Where are they? Where are they? You ask them, where were you since when they were here? So you can see that God is still first our safety. It's not all the mechanisms we try to put there to protect us. Thank God for those things. But our safety is in God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so the Lord has to build. Say to you, somebody close to you, the Lord has to build. Oh, yes. He, he's the only one that will build what will at leave you. You see, why, 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 why is my concern, ladies and gentlemen, is because if it is not God that is building according to that scripture, then who is building? Then who is building? It means you are building your own thing. So in every department in church, it should be our mindset that in the children's church, the Lord is building. When we have that understanding, we can sit down and dialogue because this is not about Sister Onika. The same thing goes to the usher. The same thing goes to the media. That this is not about the leader here. It's about the commission we are all representing here together. That goes to every department that we know that this is about God building his church. And at all times, never forget this, at all times, we have to hear him. You know, I love Jesus, which is my perfect example. At every time, Jesus will always say, what I hear my father say, what I see my father do. He was always in tune with what the father said. He was always, you know, in par with what the father was doing in the frequency of the father. But when we lose that touch, that when we lose that touch, guess what happens? We start building our shacks, as the scripture says. We start building our own kingdom. So you now think now I'm in the choir, I'm the mafia of the choir. You now think now you're in the children's church. You now think if I'm not there, the children's church will not work. Listen, except the Lord builds the house. Except the Lord builds the house. The builder. You know the one that, I, go back there. He says, go to the new King James. Sorry, the King James. He has the King James. Any of the new ones, the new or old ones. Let's see something there. He says, look at that. Except the Lord build the house. Look at the next one. They labor. That's my concern. They labor in vain that builds it. Please underline that. They labor. He said, except the Lord builds the house, it doesn't matter who builds it. Even you yourself that claim to be the dawn or the mafia, if God does not build it through you, whatever you labor to build will be crushed in one second. It will be destroyed. You know, sometimes I look at some of our old churches in the country and in the city. Of, you know, the old churches, you know what I call those are old churches. Like the Dutch Reformed Church, let me be specific for those looking at... The buildings have been sold. They even sell them to mosques. They sell them to business. I know about a few churches around us that have been sold for, 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 for whatever, 
for wherever, who, as long as you have the money, come and buy. That's what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about. Is that the kind of structure you want to build? That is why if God is building something through you and me, you will see the jealousy to guard it. Because you know you are not the one building it. You know you are following the plan. It's like, it's like when God gave a plan to, to what's it called, to, to, to Noah. God gave Noah a plan and said, you're going to build this, this ark. And ladies and gentlemen, we know what happened. That he was building and preaching, building and preaching. For all this number of years, 100 and something years, he was building and planned, building and doing everything. Guess what happens? He was able to save his children. Thank God for that. And animals. Animals even believe the message of Noah than human beings of his own type. You're not catching that revelation. Sometimes the people that really believe what you are doing, you could in, in vertically call them animals. And even Satan was there, his agent. The snake was inside. Snake was preserved. No, 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 you didn't catch that. Even snake was preserved. I think Satan would have to go, go, go. This one, I believe this one. All of us are going, go. Let's keep some of us. <laughs> but imagine the true humans. I don't want us to dig that. But my concern with it was that when you see some of the pictures and, and stuff, graphics for the, the destruction of the world at that time, you will see that some of them later, when the flood was carrying them, some were holding the ark as a shield trying to bang on it. Noah, Noah. And the Bible said that it was not Noah that locked. It was God that locked. Why? Because he was the one that was building. Ladies and gentlemen, can I ask you, watching or listening, who is holding your key? Every house key is owned by its owner. Yes. It doesn't matter whether you rent or you are squatting. The main key still belongs to the owner. He can come in there anytime when he wants because he has a spare for it. Because he only gave you duplicate. No landlord gives original copies of keys to tenants. God still holds the key of this earth. He still holds the key of the church. He tells us, I will build my church. And the gate of hell shall not prevail against it. The church that the gates of every village gates is the one that is not his, is the shacks, which is built by man. If it is built by God, it could take years, but he will prevail. Because the Bible says, so mightily grew the word of God and prevail. So we must not lose sight. Because you see, I want us to read something in Isaiah. Let's go to the book of Isaiah quickly. See the concern here is... I want us to read from verse Isaiah chapter 65. Let's just because of time quickly read from verse 22. Isaiah 65 verse 22. He says, They shall not build and another inhabit. Can you see that? They shall not build and another, another what? Inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people. Amen. And my elect shall long enjoy the works of their hands. Can somebody say amen to that? We are building. And one of the things I'm very conscious of, very, very, very conscious, is to constantly try to know from him, if this is where we are supposed to go, go, this is the direction, this is that, this is that. I know many of you don't care, but because... I'm the driver. Yes, you're all passengers. So it's the driver that bear the rust. Imagine driving the car where the clutch is not working and the brake is not working. It's you that will be driving with cautions because you are the one that will first die if everybody had to die. And if others decide to jump out, how will you jump at first? So that concern should constantly be there for us to know that we will not labor in vain. But it has to be we hearing God at all time, in every department, you hearing God. Taking our time to pray, taking our time to wait on the Lord. That Father, is this what we are supposed to do now? 
Is this what we are supposed to do now? My flesh wants it. I was listening to, to, to Kenneth Hagin. You know, I'm so in love with his materials. He said one day he went to, uh, they invited him to preach in a women's, um, it was Women's Day conference. So in his church, he told them, we'll do our way in the evening, and they, because I'm going, he's going to preach somewhere in the morning. So when he, he has gone already to prepare the message, see, he said he has gone prepare the message. He has taken quotations from from Billy from all no, from other great preachers. He has combined the message very well. He has said to himself, "They will know what Women's Day's meeting is today." So he has packaged the message. He has taken powerful quotations, and he has prepared. While he was sitting there waiting and speaking in tongue, the Lord said, "Thank you for your message." When you get up there, start praying for the sick. He said, Satan, I reject that thought. With all this thing I have prepared, and you say I should pray for the sick, what has sickness have to do with Women's Day? No, no, forget that this message must be preached today. And God says, when you get up there, you will pray for the sick. He said, he said to God, one, one, this is women's conference. They never say, come and preach for the sick, come and pray for the sick. They say, come and talk to women God said to him is it you that sent you or me that sent you if I sent you put all your message one side just climb up there and pray for the sick and I, 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 I tend to I, I tend to understand what uh, Malome Higgin was saying <laughs> except you have not been in this field for a while that remember, if he's the boss, he's always going to be in boss to the full. Yes, yes, yes. You have your own plan. You didn't, you didn't hear what the Bible said in Proverbs? He said, a man makes his plans. He said, but the counsel of God will prevail. Yes, the counsel of God will prevail. You are either pleasing who sent you, or you are pleasing men, who at the end of the day are not going to pay you. And at the day, they are not the one that we endorse if what you were saying was true or not. The one who's going to endorse it is the one telling you. And he said, people that God healed that day, he was so amazed. And people were so excited and blessed. But he was thinking, when I start praying for the sick now, so women will be talking, is this why you invite this guy? He said, come and talk to us as women. He's coming here to pray for us, for sickness to go. You see, you can't go wrong following God. Please write that down. You can't go wrong following God. We can't go wrong following God. Look, God's instructions and direction for us might not be popular. But it's the right thing to do. It might not be popular. It might not be the rainy thing. It might not be what is happening. Do you know God can give you some topics that you thought this is too many? This is not the class of what I want to talk about. Or my class, I should be talking about his, his, his you know, big grammar that your teeth are all half. But the scriptures are simple. Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. You know, it's, <laughs> I understood him so well. That sometimes as you are driving, if you are connected to the Holy Spirit, he will tell you, I know you have written down. When we get there, we'll see who is the boss. So at the end of the service, you will not even touch your notes. You'll just be on another agenda completely. The same thing we must drive through. So that, so that it's, like, it's like something I've been holding on for a while to teach you. <laughs> do you know that every time we clap, do you know that we are not praising God? It will shock you. Because clapping in this world is an affirmation of what a man has done. And that's why God tells us that you have gotten your reward from man. Have you noticed when people clap for you how you feel? You feel great. You feel wonderful. You feel fulfilled. You feel you have arrived. But have you ever thought about God himself? What he feels? What he feels? Especially when we, like I talk about, we start doing spectacular things. And people start shouting, and, and, and that's where we face judgment, like I was teaching you about the anointing of judgment. We talked about Acts chapter 12, 
where he was just talking and everybody was clapping and clapping and clapping and shouting. This is the voice of God and not man. And the Bible says instantly the worm ate him up. We got to be careful with claps. Some claps could just put you in trouble. Not with me, with the one that sent you. That could, that could be the last clap you will receive. Okay, let's leave that. Let's leave that. Hallelujah. Somebody said the Great Commission. Look at verse 23. Verse 23. Verse 23. Verse 23. Can we read together? They shall not labor in vain. Say with me, I shall not labor in vain. So for us not to labor in vain, for, from where we read now in verse 22, that we will enjoy the work of our hands, is for us to stay in the commission. Stay in the plan. Stay in what he has asked us to do. Because remember, he's coming to reward us according to our works. Let's not forget that. That we are not doing our own thing. If you are not always as uh, shocked or saddened when you read that part of the Bible where Jesus says, when I come, I will check a work and you say you cast out devils in my name, I will say to you, I didn't ask you. If that have not scared you times again, it scares everybody if you accept, if, except you don't have the spirit of God, except you're not waiting for a word, except you don't believe that there is a superior being that is coming to check what we have done. So the Bible says here, yeah, let's go back there, guys. It says, it says, they shall not labor in vain. Say, I shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth for trouble. We shall not bring forth for trouble. For they are the seed of the blessed of the Lord, and they are offsprings with them. We shall not labor in vain, but we need to stay in the parameters of his assignment for us. Because not everybody he sent us to, and not everybody he has sent to us. We need to know who is us and who is not us. That should be very distinct so that we don't labor um, um, after people that God have not sent you. You, you. That's something you must know. Because when you follow people God have not sent you, they're going to drain you. You'll be having unnecessary dispute that is not called for. Every week you have to keep on trying to encourage them, do this, do this, do that. No, 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 no. No, no. Faith is a lifestyle. Faith is what? Is a lifestyle. So you don't need to encourage me to walk by faith. It's a lifestyle. So we all need to understand that it's a lifestyle. Jesus said, even when he was quoting from Deuteronomy, he said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by the words that comes out of his mouth. Faith is a lifestyle. Every believer must know that, that you are the one responsible for your faith. And I'm responsible for my faith. And as a church, we are to build your faith through God's word. The word of God is what builds faith. Nothing has built faith. So if you don't want to build your own faith, and you want somebody else to all the time spoon feed, spoon feed you, then you're going to be doing your own thing. So let's stay with the commission which he has given to us. John chapter 17. John chapter 17, verse 18 to 22. John 17, 18 to 22. The book of John, chapter 17, he says, he says from 18, he said, As thou hast sent me into the world, even so I have also sent them into the world. You can see that he has sent us into this world. Now, this is the problem. We must not forget that we have sent into the world. We must not be carried away. It's like an ambassador. An ambassador that is sent to America, and I guess they have become American. <laughs> mama, 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 L, do you know what I mean? They send you to, to, to Sudan. All of a sudden, you have become dark. You have become a Sudanese. No, no diplomat blends with the nation he is sent on a mission. And that's where we are missing it as a church. We are now blending with the world, we have lost our assignment. Have you seen a diplomat go and queue for Sasa? <laughs> you want grant? <laughs> You're not catching that. A diplomat going from office to office, say, looking for tender. Diplomat. 
Do you know as children of God, everything that must meet us will meet us where we are. Because we are representing a kingdom. Yes, we are representing a kingdom. As a pastor, I've never done anything since I've been pastoring except to preach the gospel. Maybe that's how I've been safe. Anything that comes outside of that, I divert it to the people who are professional in it. Because I know that that's not my field. I stick to my field. My field is to preach the gospel. So if there's any other opportunity that comes, I push it to people who I know could handle that so that I don't lose focus. Imagine you hear now this in me, Pastor Chaoke says, yeah, uh, the boss is having a business meeting. I'm talking to you now. It's a 20 million business. What will go through your mind? This man is a thief. <laughs> but not because he's wrong. Not because he's wrong. But my primary assignment is to come feed you tonight. Yes, is to come feed you. So the smart thing I will do in such opportunity, which I pray you come every day, is to send somebody there. Like, you know, uh, Jesus did not go to the sea to waste his time. He knew Peter was there. And that's the problem we're having. It's not a crime to send people into business. It's not a crime. But the problem we're having now, we're having crooks. Imagine if Peter has gone to the sea, catch the fish, and he got a phone call from his wife and said, there is no food. And then look at Jesus. The, you see, family confessed. I know this fish is needed for paying what we needed to do there. But we can do it another day. Or let's call Judas. He has so much money. That crook, where is he? Because I need to send this fish home. Then he catch the fish, catch the coin. And remember this. Jesus said to Peter, take the fish, open his mouth, and take the money. He didn't say, catch it, keep it. Because tomorrow, which fish will catch again? So the problem we're having today, why many pastors have dived into business, is because there is no truthful Peters. Even as a pastor, how many people have introduced to business that have run away with whatever we introduced them to? They no longer even come to church. Oh yes, they no longer come to church. Some of them have made money from it. Some of them have whatever, they have had contact from it. You, do you know even in the word system, contact you pay for? Yes, you pay for contacts. But as a pastor with my privileged position, I've given so many contacts to people where they have made money, they have whatever. Some have even double-crossed me. I say, forget that, man. No. Forget that story. It's me and you now. <laughs> forget that, man. Forget that, forget that story. Forget him. Let's talk. It's me and you cut off the middle man. You see, that is why pastors dive into it. Yeah. You have a 20 million deal this evening. You will come to church. Forget it. You just send what's up. Today, pray at home. The Lord will hear you at home. And the Lord will meet your needs at home also. To you further notice when we'll meet. You will not blame him. I can't blame any of these pastors for that. Because on my own experience... If not because I'm disciplined, I will dive in as well. And I tell you, when you dive in, to dive out will be a problem. Because you're going to be caught into it. And you will not know, you, the distractions of your lifetime is what you have caught into yourself. So let's look at this, go back there. Let's go back there, it says, And thou have sent me into the world, and even so I have sent them where? Into the world. I have sent them where? Into the world. So let's not forget that. That the way the father. You see there was one time I think I taught you. They came to force Jesus to become king. He sneaked away. They came to force him to become that. They even said to him. Are you not going to be the president? Are you not going to be the this? He ran. He knew his assignment. He knew why he was there. That is why if you read the book of Acts. Even the apostles also follow suit. When there were issues with daily distributions and whatever. They said no. We read that on Sunday in Acts chapter 6. He said, bring able leaders, able men among you. He said, bring them, men of faith. He said that we will set them over this so that we can give ourselves to what? The word and to prayer. They set themselves to that. 
But now these days, pastors, we don't do that. We don't do it. Because still, I still say it, you can blame them. You can blame the pastors. Because you say to the brothers, okay, go and do that business. I can go, you go do the business. He goes to the business. He makes 100,000. He makes 101 million. He doesn't come back to say thank you. Because you see, one thing people forget is that when God opened doors for you, it's a test. It's a test to see if you're going to come back to fulfill. Because the reason why God opened the doors is for you to go do it so that his work can be taken care of. And you are going to be blessed from it. Oh, yes. You are going to be blessed from it. But some just run with it. They forget that if he, he or she was sent here or he or she was connected there, they don't come back to say thank you to God. They don't come back to come find out what do we do. We, I know we, I'm blessed with this business. All right, this is it. I also want to give back. I want to give back to the church. I want to give back to the work of God. What can I do to advance the work of God? They don't do it. And that's why many pastors have to dive into it. Because you cannot send that crooks who pretend to be among you who first agenda is for that purpose. Remember what the Bible says in Matthew 6, 33. Seek you first the kingdom and every other thing shall be added. If this can enter businessmen, you know, business women in the church, everyone in the church, that the kingdom is first. The kingdom is first. When you make, when you make money outside of your tithe, which you, you are not even supposed to be taught or asked, you know that is for, that, because you're a good partner with him. That is his. Your second thing is, what can I do in the church? What can I do to advance the kingdom? What can I do? What can, that, is, that is God's partnership. It's like, it's like me and you doing business. You give me my own. You take your own. Uh, now the next thing is like an office. Let's use an office. The, 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 after the profit, we need to also maintain the office. The renter has to be paid. So when we are sharing the money, we know that renter must be paid. Staffs must be paid. That electricity must be paid. We cannot just say we have shared it. So you pop a two, you pop a three. No. The same thing a lot of people has forgotten in the kingdom. That we are there as, as his own children for a purpose. God is, if you are waiting for, for, for Heineken to sponsor the gospel, you are joking. You are joking. I say you are joking. If God is going to sponsor the kingdom, he's going to sponsor it through me and you. It is through us that he's going to sponsor the kingdom. If he's going to give out billions, it's going to be through me and you. But can God trust us? No, if you are not faithful with tithe, which is the elementary part of your stewardship, how will you be faithful in, in the bigger matters, in the serious matters? If we still have to spend four hours here to convince you about tithe, who will not convince you with bigger issues? Who will convince you? Not even God, because you, are, you, are, you have duped him completely. Hallelujah. Let's not forget this verse. He says, he have sent us into the so we cannot blend with the word. We cannot blend with the word. We can't blend with it. I've seen people after God has blessed them, they start doubting God. They start they, in the beginning before the blessing come, they believed in tight. Now one million have entered their hand. Now they are supposed to give hundred thousand. Now they now put on Facebook. Is tight really from God? No, I'm telling you what, what we have seen in this, in this, in this industry. You call it industry. <laughs> Just like musicians call them self industry. The same guy goes on Facebook and puts there, are we supposed to give tight? But when he came broke, God has blessed him. He believed. Until now, he now had made few changing. Now he goes on Facebook. Comment, please. Must we always tight when we make money? You know, I remember a story in, uh, in, in, in West Africa. I remember this musician. I heard he's a big musician, very big one. He went on social media and started blasting tight and blasting everything and blasting everything. The same guy has gone back to social media now saying all his businesses have died. All the money he has been using to propagate the gospel. Against the gospel. 
Nobody wants to invite him for any show. Nobody wants to even talk to him. Now he's talking on social media. Please forgive me. Is it man that we forgive? Remember what God, Jesus said to Peter, sorry, to Paul when he was going to Damascus to continue his evil. He said, Peter, he said, Paul, Paul, sorry, Saul, Saul, why have thou persecuted me? People don't know that every time you persecute God's children, you are persecuting Christ. Paul would have asked, Saul would have asked, but I never saw you. I never saw you. I was dealing with that guy. He said, yes. Everyone that carries my name, carry my person. So whatever you do to him, you do to me. So the guy is suffering the consequences of those nonsense that he has been talking about on the social media. Listen, we are not orphans. You can't get truth in the social media. That's not a platform. The Bible put the church as a pillar and ground in which the culture and attitude of God's work is to be taught. That's the ground. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless them with a the car. You say, let's use the car for evangelism. You say, no petrol. No petrol. No petrol. You know, the person, he has already planned petrol to go to work. But for this one, uh, God must do it. He must do it. No petrol. The car is there. You can't eat. The car is there. I'm not saying you mustn't use it, but it's there. <laughs> go and kick the car. Full tank for Monday for work. But for God, no petrol. <sighs> Are you the same one that will buy buses tomorrow for God? It's not possible. God can't trust you for that. He can't trust you for that. Every time we pay you for God's work, you have gotten your reward already. Not forget that. It's like you evangelism team. Because we say when you go and do evangelism, we'll buy you Spatlo. The last time I had list of so many people want to go and do evangelism because of Spatlo. Because of that, because of Spatlo in South Africa means African pie. It's a pie. It's pie, yeah. I forget meat pie. Forget those. Th this is African pie. If you have never eaten it, you're not a South African, you see. <laughs> On the street. People want to be paid for the work for service. But if they have to do it for the word, they don't ask for pay. Because... Sometimes I just wonder how God raised us up. Anything for the kingdom that involves you, he should be a priority. Every time you ask for pay, that's why I don't ask for salary. I prefer to call it allowance. Because what is he going to pay me for? For preaching. Is this work? <laughs> no. You see, people cry, they fight over pay. Never do that. Never do that. Remember this, that it's not about an individual. It's about the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. You are not going to take my poster and campaign for me for parliament. You are going for Jesus. And he said, according to scriptures, he said, you have gotten your reward already. Praise God. So we are in the world. Tell me we are in the world. We can't blend with the word. Are you getting that now? We are in the word. Look at the life of Jesus. Jesus never blended with the word. He never did. In every spectrum of his ministry, Jesus never blended with the word. And then if we read on, if we put verse, verse 19 there, look at verse 19. He said, and for their sakes, I sanctify myself, that they may also be sanctified through truth. I like that. For their sakes, are you there? He sanctify himself. Have you ever wondered, have you ever put that to yourself? That for the sake of the gospel, you have sanctified yourself. For the sake of the gospel, you have sacrificed that. For the sake of the gospel, I have let this go. Didn't you hear what Paul said? He said, for the sake of Christ, I have given all this to gain Christ. It's sacrifice. It's sacrifice. And then look at the next verse. 
20. He says, Neither pray for I for these alone, but for those, look at that, for them also which have believed on me through their words. Oh, amen. So he didn't just pray for them, he prayed for us. We were in his prayers. He knew we were going to come. Yes, many of us here and those who are watching, that we are pr those around the world, you are God answers prayer. Jesus prayed in advance for us. We are not here by mistake. Me and you are answered prayer to this. And then look at verse 21. Verse 21. Verse 21. It says, that they all may be one as thou, the Father, art in me and I in thee. That they also may be one in us. I like that. That they also may be what one in us. That the world may believe that thou have sent me. Verse 22, everybody. Verse 22. He says, look at verse 22. And the glory which you have given me, I have given them. That they may be one, even as we are one. Hello, somebody. We are one. The church must be one. We cannot be divided on any ground at all. Because persecution for one is persecution for all. The, 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 the whatever for one is whatever for all. And the same thing, why? Because we are on the assignment. Hallelujah. John, first John, sorry, John chapter 14. John 14 verse 20 quickly. John 14, 20. John chapter 14 verse 20 says, At that day you shall know that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I in you. Oh, hallelujah. Look at that. He is in the Father, and I am in him, and we are all in one. We are complete. And verse 2, verse 21, please. Verse 21. He that has my commandment and keep them. You have his word and you keep them. He is that that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be love of my father. And I will love him and will manifest myself to him. May he truly manifest himself to you in the name of Jesus Christ. So as we look at the great commission, 1 John chapter 1. 1 John chapter 1, I want the scripture to speak to us. 1 John chapter 1, verse 3. 1 John chapter 1, verse 3. He says, That which we have seen and had declare, we also, look at that, we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with who? The Father, and with who? His Son, Jesus Christ. Who are we in fellowship with? With the Father, with the Son. Because we are under the assignment. The Father to the Son, the Son to us. So he tells us that our fellowship, can we read together? Ye also may have what? Fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with who? With the Father. And with who? His Son, Jesus Christ. And this is possible by the Holy Spirit. By the Holy Spirit. First John chapter 3, the same book, chapter 3, verse 24. Verse 3 of this same book, and verse 24. And he that keepeth his commandment dwelleth in him, and he in him, and thereby we know that he abided in us. By how? By the Spirit, which he is what? Which he has given to us. So the Holy Spirit in us is the full package of God himself. That is why I keep on asking, why are Christians failing with the Spirit? We are not supposed to fail. We cannot fail having the Holy Spirit. Any Christian that fails, you must ask yourself if you are truly a Christian. Because you cannot fail having the Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Ghost is like you, all of us here tonight. And those who might be watching, listen, what makes you is your spirit. When your spirit leaves, you are useless. So the best of anyone is a spirit. So the best of God is the Holy Ghost. So he gave us his best. So we cannot fail having him. The problems they go back with. What we said, I think I heard uh, was being said now with Paul. Paul, this lady was following him for so long, but he never knew that this lady was an agent of the devil. 
This woman was going around telling everybody, this is the man of God, this is the man of God. When there is no spiritual sensitivity and the fullness of the spirit in you, even devils will promote you for their agenda, not for heaven's agenda. Not for heaven's agenda. If you are not full of the spirit, to know you are under an assignment and to know that you are in this great commission, not for nothing, and that without the spirit in you, you can't fulfill it. His agenda for you cannot be fulfilled without the Holy Ghost. Then you are running your own thing. And that is why people get angry so quickly. People easily get offense in church. They get offense. They get angry. Imagine, we've been preaching now for 15 years here. You know how many people we have met? You know the things they have done to us? <laughs> hey! And we still have more to come. Oh, yes. There are more to come. When I see some ministers say they are 50 years in ministry, I say, 50. 50. And I'm minus 15 from 50. 35. I say, I have 35 to go. You have never met people that will make you feel like, what are you doing here? Did God actually call you into this thing? You are trying to help. Oh, you are trying to help. They will misinterpret what you are doing, read out of context what you are doing, even abuse you on top of it as well. But you see, you are called to do this thing. The good thing is that it's making you stronger. Oh, yes, yeah, making you thicker, making you hard. I'm getting as a hardened man now that I no longer have sleepless night, unlike before. As one wrote it, she will tell you. Now I don't, I don't have sleep. I sleep now because I know what, what is happening that have never happened before. <laughs> you know, situation will happen to you, you will build your capacity of I don't care. Yes. I mean, I can't run after people anymore. No, the same you I run after tomorrow. The same you will turn around tomorrow and say you were bad. So if God can't run after you, my running has no strength. <laughs> so I, I better run after God and let God run after others. They are running after one person and then lose the whole assignment completely. Jesus said, Who the, all that the Father has given to me must come to me. They must come to me. He said, I shall by no means cast anyone. But you got to stay focused. Everyone stay focused. Stay focused. All right. First Thessalonians chapter 2. So in chapter 5, verse 24. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 24. Let's not forget that we are in Jesus' assignment. And it's our standard. Find out about Jesus, what he has done when he was in certain situations like us. Find out what was his response how did he handle it? Let's not be like uh, the woman at the well who came to Jesus and says, uh, my fathers, they all go to Jerusalem to worship God. And Jesus sat by the well and said, do you know who is talking to you? And he said, I don't care to know. I don't know, but I know that um, it is said that they that want to worship him, worship him in truth and in spirit. And Jesus loved her and looked at her and said, it's your problem. Paraphrased by me. <laughs> you worship what you don't know. That's what he said to her. You worship what you don't know. Have you not seen people worship God, but they don't know the God they are worshiping? Have you not seen people praise, they don't know the God they are praising? They just praise because they see other people praise. I don't know if you have seen this video where the guy is running, and the guy just see him running, join him also. And they are not him also. They didn't even stop and ask, why? They now finally stop when they have gone. Why are we running? So I didn't know why. I just saw that. You see that guy in the front there? He was one that started this thing, then I joined him. And then they started joining, joining. Nobody cared to find out. Let's wait. Why are we running? Do you know? <laughs> Do you know it's the same problem with a lot of Christians? They just go to church without knowing why they go to church. Some just go to church to go get offense. Yes, some just go to church to just go get angry. 
Some just go to church to just go fight. Just go to church, just go make friends. Just go to church to go do business. What is the purpose of the church? Let's not merchandise God's people. That's not why he gave them to us. You must know his purpose, his plan, and his pursuit. If you don't know those three things, you are completely running your own agenda, not his agenda. Run with that motives. What is his purpose? What is his plan? And what is his pursuit? If that becomes clear to you and I, then the race becomes easy. It becomes easy. You don't need anybody to fast and ask you. You will know that you are a soldier. You are reporting for duty. How many of you are working here? Many of you are working, right? I don't think your boss is thinking in the morning, is she going to come to work today or not? How many of you, your bosses has phoned and say, hey, Nico, are you coming to work? <laughs> it's only church we have to phone you. Are you in? Are you in this week? Say, no, I'm not. My mother died. He's still in the mortuary. No, no, no. You see, remember the story of, of King um, Elijah when he called Elisha? What, when he threw the mantle on Elijah, what did Elijah do? He destroyed everything, even his farming business. He destroyed everything and followed Elisha and followed Elijah. When you are under this commission, he is first. Every other is secondary. He is number one. He is first. If you have time, you can attend to other matters, but his assignment is number one. You can never in this assignment, I'm talking to every department now as a matter of principle. You can't say because you are going to work tomorrow, so we should shift the meeting. Others should go ahead and hold it. You can't hold everybody ransom because of your own personal agenda. You can't do that. If the manager of ShopRite is going to a funeral, will he close ShopRite because he's going? You are not catching that. So you cannot run God's thing on your own personal capacity. No, you cannot do that. And I don't want to hear that. That because she's going for, for, for whatever meeting, so he decided we should shift church. You can't do that because you're not the owner of the church. You're not. I'm not the owner. That's why even I'm not going to be here. The least person can preach. Because it's not built around me. That's why I can call anybody to go and pray. Go and lead prayer. Go and lead prayer. Go and lead prayer. Because the work is not built around Pastor Sam. It's not built around Chaoke. It's supposed to be built around all of us. So one of the day I can call Posha. Posha, tomorrow you're leading prayer in church. If she like, she says children didn't close. The parents didn't come and carry all their children. So, <laughs> and as I didn't show up, you will tell that to God, not to me. I have delegated. Is somebody getting that now? So, I must be able to delegate to Mama Joanna. Mama Joanna, you are going to lead in church tomorrow. Because you should come to a point after you have been in church for a year, you are still sitting down there. We can't trust you for responsibility. No, you know me, I'm very shy. Shy. At this time, are you a sort? Say I'm part of the commission. So I can be called on at any time. Isn't it true? Isn't it true? You can be called on at any time. You don't need to have 10 years to prepare. Most times you see Pastor Chawoke preach. Is that day he knew he was preaching? No. They, they have in this church is a military style. A military woman knows what I mean. It's military style. You are prepared to die every day. You don't choose the day. You say, I came to this world on the 22nd of April. So I'm planning I'm going that day. <laughs> you are joking. Let them send you to war and refuse to carry a gun. No, you are a soldier. Tell me what you are a soldier. You must be ready. Your books must be ready. You should have messages since January till 2022 that if they call you anytime you're not looking for scriptures you just open your book and say daddy the food are here plenty which one should i give them now it's my turn not now enter internet google blessing 
three steps to blessing. <laughs> Holy Ghost fire on you. Have you seen soldiers that go on the internet to Google? Four weeks to war, what do we do? <laughs> what cap do we put on? At this time, you must be ready. I should see you with your diary. Do you, have you ever checked the protocol? They will know in them. They know I have so many diaries. So many. Sometimes I come with four or five diaries. Because I don't know which of the diaries. I, I have this diary in my God says no. What I want you to preach is on that one. So I just carried all of them as a matter of fact. Six of them to the pulpit. So when I climb on the pulpit, I open two here. Yeah. Father, I'm open for all of them. Lost okay, that one. You are ready. What do you write in your diary? Love. It should be inspirations. You know one of the reasons why I want to, well, one of the reasons why I want driver very soon is because sometimes God put thoughts in my mind, so I have to pack and write. Oh, that's why God is the one that protects us. Sometimes if you come to my car, I have pens. So sometimes when I'm in a robot, it's just I didn't do shorthand, you know, those shorthand writing. So I have to do my own scrambling on the paper quickly. Sometimes I have to use L-time paper, airtime, petrol uh, receipt, and write messages right there by the robot because it just came. That's why I want to drive very soon. So while he's driving, I can be writing properly. Not for fun. Driver, turn left. <laughs> Driver, turn. No, I can drive myself. But the fact is that because of information that are going to be coming, even do you know when I go to the lavatory? I hope you know it's lavatory. I go with book. I don't just go there no matter how the energy is going to be inside there. <laughs> Ask Mom Ruthie, she will tell her. Ask my kids. I, will tell her. I go there. I don't just I go there with books to read. I go there because I don't want to waste any moment. Greatest revelation comes while you are sitting. Even when you are closing your eyes, oh, God is still speaking. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. That's why God has to bless you to have a comfortable lavatory. Yeah, while you are doing the thing, just releasing the gas naturally. Shh. When you hear your sound, God punish poverty. It's a very bad thing. The moment you hear your sound, the thing will release. Soup. Are you getting the skill? The moment you hear your sound, I don't know what sound you produce, huh? <laughs> but it should be programmed to your capacity of perfumes. <laughs> the perfume knows this sound is for that. And then they will react immediately, immediately just to, to change the atmosphere for you there so you can be hearing God properly inside there. <laughs> Hallelujah. We are in a great assignment. Amen. Amen. First Thessalonians 5. Verse 24. Can we read, I love this. Can we read together? Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. Can this, can this be resonating in your heart? Don't be afraid for nothing. Don't be afraid. He's the one that calls you. He's the one that calls me. If that is settled in your heart, remember what we were reading one time. He knows how to go to the east and bring it. He knows how to go to the west and bring it. He knows how to go anywhere to bring it. Oh, let's read one more time. Read it quickly, media. I only have five, five minutes. He said, faithful is he that calleth you who also would do it. Message Bible here quickly. Or the New Living Translation. The one who called you is completely dependable. If he said it, he will do it. Relax. That 50 million, we have it in the name of Jesus. I said we have it in the name of Jesus. You don't need to, be, you don't need to despair. If, he, if he's the owner of it, he knows who, who is carrying the fish. He knows where the coin is. So look at that. Put that again, I love that. He says, the one who called you is completely, look at your neighbor and give him a knock, so you hear that? The one who called you is completely dependable. If he said it, he would do it. Finally, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 9. 
Hallelujah. Let's stay in the great commission. It's great. That's why it's called great. We won't have time to analyze them. It's great. This commission is great. It's great. It's a great one. It will change your life. There is no profession in this world that would have changed your life than this great commission. If Jesus did not become a lawyer, even though he was called a lawyer himself, then he tells you something. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 9. Can we read together, everybody? He says, Who has saved us and called us, I like that, with what? A holy calling. Say, my calling is not ordinary. Say, my calling is not ordinary. Look at the next one. Not according to our works. He didn't call us because we were perfect. He didn't call us because we wanted to do it. He called us, look at the next one. But according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before the time began. So you are not here by accident. I say you are not here by accident. I'm not here by accident. We are not here by accident. We were called before the world began. So what are we to do? We are to step on every path, every word, just like Jesus did. He stepped on every path. That is why it's a great commission. You are not here to fulfill your agenda. We are here to fulfill his agenda. We are here to fulfill his mandate to his people. That's what we are here for. That's why we can't afford to abuse it. We can't afford no wonder Jesus gave an, a parable. He said, if you, if you have 100 sheep and one misses, he said, what do you do? Keep the 99 that is safe. Go after that one. And go get him and add him back to the fold. That's to tell you how important we are in the kingdom. And I pray you will not miss it. I said that the, the, the vibration of the kingdom will always constantly be before your mind, before your spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ. Can we stand up as we lift our hands? Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for listening. We trust we're blessed with this broadcast. Please let us know what God has done to you. 